At this time, I call on the President of the World Bank, Dr. Kim, to address the governors. It's been nearly a half a century since these annual meetings were last held in Tokyo. Back then, Japan was in the midst of its remarkable economic transformation. In Europe, countries that had spent centuries at war were forging peace through greater economic integration. In Africa, the wave of independence was opening new opportunities for self-determination. And in America, institutionalized racism was being confronted by a civil rights movement. Martin Luther King Jr. captured this universal quest for progress and dignity when he said, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. Dr. King's statement revealed a fundamental optimism about the human condition, an optimism which has fueled my life, in which I carry with me to the World Bank Group. So here's the question I want to address this morning. What will it take for all of us, governments, the private sector, civil society, and multilateral organizations around the globe to help the Onedas and Dangars all over the world to realize their goals? And what will the World Bank Group do to help end poverty and build shared prosperity? Over the last decade, some 50 developing countries, collectively home to over 4 billion people, have seen their GDP grow by an average of at least 5% a year. Thanks to this growth, poverty has fallen more quickly than ever before. The first Millennium Development Goal to have the 1990 poverty rate by 2015 was achieved some five years ahead of schedule. In Africa, new opportunities beckon, as I saw for myself when I visited Cote d'Ivoire and South Africa last month. At a World Bank-supported jobs training center in Cote d'Ivoire, I met ex-combatants who are laying down their arms and picking up pliers and screwdrivers, learning to become electricians. This kind of optimism is contagious, and it's spreading across the continent. The first scenario is where most countries maintain their current development trajectories. Under this scenario, the incidence of global poverty is likely to continue de decreasing by about one percentage point a year. Over the last two decades, the developing world halved its poverty rate. This will result in, a, in an additional halving of the poverty rate over the next 10 years. The number of people who join the middle class will increase appreciably. This is impressive progress, but it's not good enough. We can do better. The second scenario is a darker one, where escalating crises in the global economy throw developing countries off their recent growth trajectories. High and rising inequality cuts off economic opportunities for people and limits long-term growth prospects. Under this scenario, progress against global poverty would slow and perhaps even reversed. We must do everything we can to avoid this outcome. The third scenario is the one that energizes me, that makes me excited to get up and go to work every morning. This is the path where we come together to bend the arc of history and accelerate progress. We help more people participate in and benefit from development. We build greater resilience and more people enjoy economic security. And if we're willing to make the effort, we can virtually eliminate extreme poverty. This goal is not far-fetched. It is achievable. And together, we can make it happen. What's clear to me is that the evolving world needs a strong World Bank group, a World Bank group that through our lending, our knowledge, and our convening power provides integrated development solutions for both today's and tomorrow's challenges. To be an effective solutions bank, we will need to seek answers beyond our walls. Today, knowledge is everywhere, flowing from entrepreneurs in Delhi to citizens in rural Mexico to civil society in Lagos to policymakers in Sarajevo. With our global reach, the World Bank is ideally positioned to connect and convene multiple stakeholders from around the world, brokering knowledge exchange across institutional boundaries. To do so, we will strengthen and expand our partnerships. This means reinforcing collaboration with the IMF, the UN, and the regional development banks. And it, be, and it means building new alliances with leading civil society organizations, academic institutions, and the private sector to advance shared goals. Our transformation into a solutions bank will take place over time, and we're still identifying opportunities to operationalize this shift. 
But today I want to highlight four early actions we'll be pursuing to speed this process. First, we'll be establishing a clear and measurable bottom line. This will force us to take a hard look at everything we do and push us to be as effective as possible. The World Bank Group's mission is to end poverty and build shared prosperity. That's why I've asked the institution to come up with a bottom line in the form of ambitious targets for these two goals. Second, we're strengthening our implementation and results. To do so, we will change incentive structures to reward implementers and fixers, people who produce results for clients on the ground. It should not take two years for a project to evolve from concept to implementation. We want to be held accountable not for process, but for results. That's why I will work with the board to streamline our procedures, simplify our processes, and cut down project preparation time. Third, we will rapidly improve our ability to, prov to provide our clients with integrated solutions for maximum impact. Better synergies will reinforce our comparative advantage as the only global development institution that can credibly support the public and private sectors, provide access to exceptional knowledge resources, and offer risk insurance to energize investment. That's why I've asked my management team to come up with a plan for building greater synergies across the World Bank Group to save costs and improve effectiveness. Fourth, we need to continue investing in data and analytic tools, building on the su success of the Open Data Initiative. Data are crucial to setting priorities, making sound policy, and tracking results. Yet many countries have weak statistical capacity and lack reliable and updated economic and poverty data. That's why we will work with our partners to ensure virtually all developing countries have timely and accurate data. And we will be reporting annually on progress in fighting poverty and building shared prosperity. I believe it is time for us to write the next chapter in our evolution. It's time for us to become a solutions bank. We must listen, learn, and partner with countries and beneficiaries to build bottom-up solutions. This is how we will increase our relevance and our value in today's and tomorrow's global economy. At the World Bank Group, we often talk about dreaming of a world free of poverty, the motto inscribed in the entrance of our headquarters. Well, it's time to move from dreaming of a world free of poverty to achieving it. It's time to bend the arc of history. With global solidarity underpinned by a relentless drive for results, we can, we must, and we will build shared prosperity and end poverty. Thank you very much.